I had to find the strength from within to say, I'm going to go all the way. I was always open to, I'm not married to method, I'm married to outcome. Welcome to the Brand Brief Podcast, where we discuss the latest trends on the business side of fashion, beauty, entertainment, as well as the impact of technology on driving brand growth. This podcast is powered by Brand Method Media Group, and I'm your host, Kelly Kelly. Today's guest is Justin Cooper, CEO and producer of JOC Media and Entertainment, a global creative consulting agency specializing in marketing communications and global film and television production solutions. Welcome to the show, Justin. Thank you for having me. Wonderful. So I want to just kind of take it back to maybe the beginning. What, what is the inspiration and the vision behind JLC Media and Entertainment? Well, it definitely has been a long journey. I would trace it back to my roots in South Carolina. I grew up in a very conservative upbringing, and I knew that that wasn't the life for me. I, I was always drawn to movies and television. And coming from South Carolina, I had no way of understanding or trying to find a way to, find, to, to move myself from where I was to where I wanted to be in entertainment. So I would say the journey began in the 80s, you know, going through high school in the 90s and graduating, realizing that if my dreams were to be a reality, it was up to me to achieve them. So finding and reading and researching how I was going to position myself or move myself to, to be positioned to get to where I am today has been a, a, a journey that has taken me through music. PR, marketing, to the work that I do now in TV and film. And like most people, we are trained to get the job and work the job for years and years and years. And I was on that train. And what woke me up from that train ride to pursue my dreams is repeated layoffs. Uh, I wanted to take control of my destiny in my own hands. So JLC Media has always been in the background, even when I was working for other employers. But my last layoff in 2017 really compelled me to move forward with my business with an attitude of not looking back. I, I was tired of the layoffs. I think I had experienced three layoffs, uh, three to four layoffs uh, over the course of my career. 2017 happened. I said, I'm going to, to build my own table. And that has been the journey of JLC Media, realizing you know, where I came from and the limited resources that were there that took me from there to Atlanta, from Atlanta to Los Angeles and from Los Angeles to the world. And 2017 definitely was a pivotal time for me in manifesting and moving forward with what's JOC Media as it stands today. And, and you mentioned the world and you are indeed a world traveler. Any look on your social handles, you are literally going across the globe working on projects. And I, I really want to get a little more candid here. And because, you know, a lot of people have this dream. I want to be in entertainment. I want to be in music. It doesn't always happen, and I'm certain yours was not without hardship. Tell me some pivotal lessons that you learn. Make it that's a huge leap. Like, what's one key thing lesson that you learned early on? Like when you didn't necessarily have all the traction that you have now. What did you learn, and what kept you going? I would say what kept me going is when I came to the realization that no one knows what the hell they're doing. Everyone is figuring it out as they go along. When I realized that, and I realized also that for where you want to go, sometimes you can't, oftentimes you can't rely or talk to people that haven't been to where you're trying to go. I also realized that when you are trying to do something new, you will have detractors, you will have people saying that you can't do it. They are projecting their fear onto you. So I learned not to lean into the fear that other people were trying to impose on me. And I just realized that, as my mom would say for many times growing up, that if, if it's meant to be, it's up to me. So as I said, growing up in rural South Carolina, where most people, you know, when I was growing up, when they graduated high school, they either went into the military, they got worked at a local job at a plant or, you know, some job locally. And here I was, uh, the black sheep, in my family, saying that I wanted to do entertainment. And 
I just had a lot of, I had a lot of pushback, even within my own family, but I never let that deter me. Uh, did it hurt? Yes. It, it always hurts when the people that you love, you think that they should see what you see and they should support what you're trying to do. That sometimes isn't always the case. But if you feel called to do whatever it is that you want to do, and in my case, it was entertainment, I had to find the strength from within to say, I'm going to go all the way. I was always open to, I'm not married to method, I'm married to outcome. And that has been like a, the consistent thing that has driven me, always being open to opportunity and never allowing other people to, to tell me what they feel my limitations should be. I love that. I'm not married to method. I'm married to outcome. That's definitely a key piece of wisdom to take. So now I'd like to get more clarity around what JOC Media Entertainment does, because you have a very unique background. I think I'm not in the film world, but your your comms, like you're a, a marketing communication pro for a long time. How do the two come together under the umbrella of JLC Media? And what does that look like in terms of projects? Well, at the core of who I am, I'm a writer. I've been a writer since I was a child. And I think writing for me was a way to articulate my feelings. So I, I've always been in touch with feelings and, and being able to write. And I believe that everything that we do starts with the written word. You know, if there's an idea, you have to move it from your head to paper. And when you look at it on paper, you can formalize a plan to get you from the inception to from inception to the realization of whatever it is that you're trying to do. So with my background in journalism, I, I graduated from Benedict College with a degree in journalism. And I started out in, in PR. PR was what I was interested in. Again, a lover of the written word. I love being able to, to tell stories. And I specifically love human interest stories. And I did PR for, for a number of years. And I think the pivotal, the pivotal moment for me that got me to where I am now is I had a job in the Atlanta market working for a large hospital system. And I went into this job doing PR, but inherited a lot of the responsibilities for marketing. And at the time, I absolutely hated it. I was like, I didn't sign up for this. But I, I always, I've come to believe that everything that we do prepare, prepares us for what we're gonna do next. So when I was in this job at this large hospital in Atlanta, I was in charge of things like the public facing uh, website, the intranet, the community, the, the employee newsletter, all of these things. I was able to take the writing portion of my love for writing to put into marketing pieces, to, to sell an idea or to communicate an idea for calls to action that we wanted our employees to, to do or the, the surrounding communities. And in that role for the three to four years I was in, I worked on some amazing projects that really challenged me and allowed me to grow professionally as a marketing communications professional. So everything, as I mentioned, from website content, website content management, to media buying, to producing the commercials that, that we would produce to promote the hospital, all of that really uh, honed my skill. And I would, I would venture to say that that experience at that job was really like a boot camp. And it allowed me, when I decided to leave the Atlanta market for Los Angeles, to position me to take my skills as a, a, a writer or a journalist, as well as a marketing uh, professional in the roles that will subsequently come afterwards. And I want to add that, as you mentioned, I do have a very unorthodox journey. So while I was at the large hospital in Atlanta, I benefited from uh, taking on the responsibility of filming. So in that regard, I dealt with the, the Clayton County Economic Development Office, the Georgia Film Office, and we were de dealing with filming, but it also dealt with marketing. I had to be able to market that the hospital that I was working at was a place that filmmakers should choose to film in if they decided to come to Atlanta. So writing and being able to write well, or to write copy well enough to say, hey, this is a great location, all played into the marketing communications that I, I'm trying to find the right words, that, that I was able to be successful in, in that role. And that foundation is what I still stand on to this day. So yeah, I have an interesting journey, but it all intersects at the corner of, of being able to write really well, 
to be able to articulate ideas and oftentimes, you know, take nothing and make it into something that is appealing to the audiences that I'm trying to target, whether it be in in film, uh, marketing or journalism. And I've always thought that was such a cool aspect of your journey to watch because, you know, as I've worked in marketing for so long, if I were to take a job at a hospital, even in their marketing department, there is no way my brain would be able to fathom getting connected into film. And I mean, you were a part of and led in in terms of the communications and the relationships, major feature films, like big productions. And I just don't think most comms are like, okay, I answered this ad for, you know, even the biggest hospital in my city that might open up doors for the film industry. That's like, I've always thought that was so cool. And you did amazing work and an amazing job. And it was like a, like a tool in your tool, tool belt, as my mom would say. Cause I don't know if you thought that was like a connection. I would not have thought that was a connection, but you know, yeah. it's always great. I, I think when, when I got that job, it was a challenging time. I won't say how old I was because I don't want to age myself. <laughs> but when I got the job at the hospital, it was a time where, as I like to say, I needed to eat. And I had come from a, a, a music background as I had many years of like music entertainment experience, you know, PR, that whole world. So going into the hospital, I didn't wake up one day and say, you know what? I really think I want to work at a hospital. It was an opportunity. And I'm always about seizing opportunity, no matter what it looks like. Because as I said earlier, I believe everything that we do prepares us for what's next. I had no idea. I was just going to go there, do a good job, as I always do with all the other past employers that I've had. But the film industry, it kind of fell in my lap. And I, I took it by the reins. And my boss at the time, and I give my boss, Claudia Hall, I give her, I give her props because... She was one, she was the one that really pushed me and gave me room to really make the role of, you know, I started out as the marketing specialist and then I was promoted to the spokesperson, but she gave me a lot of leeway. And I remember after the first project we did, which was what to expect when you're expecting, we did uh, that project and it might've been one other. And she said, you know what? This is a whole lot because, again, we were running a a small marketing and marketing communications department for a large hospital. So it was she was the number one. I was the number two. And I think I might have had a a marketing specialist under me when I got promoted. So it's just three of us. And we're dealing with crisis communications every day. We're dealing with marketing the hospital. And she said, you know what? This film stuff is a lot of work. I don't want to do this. So if you want to do this, you can take this on, but you still have to maintain being on top of your your work. And I I took the challenge and I'm grateful that that I did because it it allowed me to meet so many people and it definitely allowed me to put a foot in the door into the film industry, which was something that I always wanted to do. But when you are an outside person, you know, Spike Lee is not my uncle, uh, Tyler Perry is not my cousin. When you are an outside person, It can be very daunting trying to get from point A to point B. But one of the things that I've mentioned is I have always been open to opportunities. I looked at it as an opportunity, but going into that role, I had no idea that it was going to come to me in that way. And I'm glad that um, I was open to the challenge of of learning. Yeah, that's incredible. I've, I've always been so fascinated by that. And speaking of, so obviously the film industry is coming off of a very pivotal time. And what insight can you provide into the real impact of AI in the film industry? What, what in, you know, and just basic, what does that look like? We read headlines and we speculate, but you are in it. You are there every day. You have weathered the storm that the big one that passed. And I'm sure there's still some other underlying things happening now. What does that really look like? What is the impact of AI on the film industry? I think technology in general, AI being encompassed in that is a disruptor. I mean, we live in an age where within five years, I mean, who can can say what's going to happen in the next five years? But I think technology is something that is here to stay. I think being fearful of it is counterproductive. I think the writers, the Writers Guild and the strike that they had, everyone wants more money. People are deserving of money for the talents that they bring to the table. 
Uh, but AI is a real threat. I use AI and some of the marketing work that I do. I use it as a tool that helps me to be more efficient. But I see the the fear of, okay, AI may become smart enough to, to write a script. I don't think that we're there yet, but I think that that day is coming. But I still think that there will always be a human component where you're going to have to have humans to proofread what AI is going to probably spit out for scripts and stories. Uh, so I would venture to say, instead of being fearful of, you know, AI as a technology, perhaps we should we should embrace a greater understanding of how it could benefit the work that we do as creatives to make our lives more efficient. Um, on the production side, uh, I know there are a few studios here that are embracing virtual production. I represent a lot of international destinations who desire foreign productions, specifically U.S. productions, to come to their locations, whether it be Jordan, Thailand, or Hungary. But you have studios who have spaces where they have like virtual screens that they can just go to the location, shoot the landscapes, and bring that footage and project it onto virtual backdrops where they don't necessarily have to go to a Jordan or Thailand or Hungary to shoot. They can shoot it on the sound stage here in Los Angeles or anywhere in the U.S. as a as a cost saving. So even on the the the, the location physical production side, there is a fear to that. And I've been in conversations where there has been consideration for these territories, some of them, to say, "Hey, we can't control what people do." If they want to come and capture B-roll for, for landscapes, we really can't stop. There's no way to stop that. You may be able to legislate that, but before that can happen, the conversations I've been in is, okay, what if we license, what if we shoot and then we license this footage out? That way uh, we don't box ourselves out of uh, any uh, economic development opportunities if they choose not to physically come to our location. They will still have the landscapes that they are going to project on their amazing screens, um, but we need to be in control or at least a part of that conversation to say, hey, you're you're using our landscapes as a backdrop, but we need to, to be uh, compensated or credited in some type of way. A great example of a production that uses technology in this way is The Mandalorian. It's well documented that they shot most of that on sound stages, but to the viewer, you you can't tell that it, it wasn't shoot, shot in an actual physical location. So I think the disruption is going to happen. I think um, creatives have a right to speak their opinions and to, to strike if they feel that they are threatened or they feel that they're not being uh, paid justly for their work. But technology is not going to go anywhere. Uh, and I think uh, we all benefit from elevating our knowledge uh, in the particular areas of technology that will disrupt the work that we do, whether it be AI, or whether it be virtual production. I think that's a really good point. I saw, I don't remember what industry it was pertaining to, but it was kind of that same conversation because this has just taken over everything. I think historically, at least in our current lifetime, we've seen um, disruptors maybe hit certain industries kind of harder than others. And this just fell on everyone, everywhere, no matter what your job was, no matter what your title was, it just impacted us all so heavy all at the same time. But I saw this clip on LinkedIn and it was the person speaking was basically saying, at some point we have to get past this fear or this nobody should be using it to how do we harness it? How do we make it work in a in a way that is beneficial for everyone to a certain degree? I think the idea that we can eliminate it is kind of weird. I'm in marketing, as you know, and in the beginning, I would see people buying software to test if AI had anything to do. And it's like, for this was a waste of your money because at some point this train is moving yeah. and to discount or eliminate or try to discredit someone for the integration of AI is crazy. I don't I don't really see those kind of posts anymore about how someone caught an AI created that. Listen, was it good? Was it not good? Is it plagiarized as something very different? But, you know, I, I agree with you. We have to figure out a way and be creative. And I think that's great. That's I'm always interested to hear how 
what solutions people are coming up with in different industries because they they run far beyond oh you can use ai to make a picture oh you can use ai to make like a social cap people are really putting this thing to work and it's it's really incredible so i would love to close out with any projects that you have on the docket? What do you have going on or coming down the pipeline that you would like to share? Any new developments? Well, thankfully, the strike is over. So on the film side, as a producer, I'm able to move the needle with a few projects that I have been developing. So I'm currently developing a, a documentary entitled Pan Am, The Untold uh, Legacy of Cyril McSween. It is a fascinating story that I learned about through my work as a marketing communications professional for one of my corporate clients. So there's a lot of overlap in the work that I do. And I always like that ideas can come from anywhere. And this particular idea just came from a client that I'm servicing that I decided to to take a deep dive in making his story more widely known. You know, you have movies like Hidden Figures or The Green Book. This particular story that I'm trying to tell through a documentary as well as a scripted feature captures the resilience of Afro-Latino man coming to the U.S. amid Jim Crow and all the great work that he did in the years following his migration to the, to the U.S. I'm also developing a, a limited series on a uh, retired football player who became a government whistleblower. So that's what I'm working on on the film side. I'm also, of course, always promoting the countries that I'm representing, Jordan, Thailand, and Hungary, to LA-based studios, now that the strike is over, we're saying we're open for business. Please come film in our locations. And on the, the marketing communication side, I do extensive work with a, a Fortune, multiple business units within a Fortune 100 uh, company. And every day I'm always producing, you know, uh, internal or external content, whether it be video or digital assets for their internal and external customers. So those are the things that I'm working on. I'm excited about 2024. I'm looking to expand and scale my business. I, I think I'm at a point now where uh, I'm ready to scale and there may be opportunities for those looking to work in this space that I'm in. Jock Media may have opportunities available soon. I love that. I love 2024. It's feeling exciting. I, and personally, I'm not usually a big like, this is my year. It kind of feels like that. That doesn't mean it will be without hardship, but this is probably the first year I can remember where I have felt wildly optimistic, and even in the face of all that's happened in the last year. So it's, it's a really exciting time. And as you scale, we might need to have you back to discuss that because that's a huge thing. That's going to wrap our show today. Thank you to our incredible guest, Justin Cooper, CEO and producer of JLC Media and Entertainment. We will have contact information for JLC Media and Entertainment in the show notes for anyone interested in learning more about the projects and other things that are coming into development. If you've enjoyed today's episode, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and review. Thank you so much.